Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've been your host, Lauren Siler. Sorry, sorry Arlene is not here today. But uh, on this program, we focus on um, Alan Henry Fruling, uh, a gentleman who came to Vermont despite his challenges, uh, and uh, he's doing well, and we're going to talk about falling through the cracks and making it. Uh, but before we do that, we would like to say special thanks to our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and many, many, many other supporters and sponsors. Um, let's introduce Alan Henry Fruling, who, um, despite his challenges, fell through the cracks from New York, but came to Vermont. Welcome, Alan Fruling, to Able Then On Air. Thank you. Well, nice to be here. Okay. So, uh, why don't, before we get into your hobbies, uh, which is baseball, baseball card collecting and the fact that you would like to start a small business despite your challenges of autism and other uh, situations, um, let us, um, what brought you to Vermont? Why did you come from New York to Vermont? Tell us a little bit about the problem that happened and uh, go from there. Okay, can you hear me? I was evicted from my apartment. I couldn't get any help to pay rent. Okay. And? Uh, I was evicted from my apartment. I couldn't hold on. get any help stop, to pay Stop, stop. Uh, soon the, the picture froze. Oh, oh okay. Okay, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Alan. I lived with my parents all my life. Mm -hmm. After they passed, I couldn't get help to pay the rent. That's why I was evicted. Okay. So um, so would you say in New York you didn't get as many services as you, as you would have liked? None. Plain and simple. None whatsoever. Okay. Um, so the fact... So... Define in your own words why people with special needs fall through the cracks. In your own words. You don't have to give the definition. This is a hard one to... Just give me a minute. Go ahead. Take we, your we time. Don't think, we don't, don't know what we're doing. Okay. W what exactly does that mean? <clears throat> Taking care of an apartment, paying bills. They think we all are mentally challenged. 
mentally challenged and autism are two separate things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, so um, you've worked mostly all your life. You've worked in the jewelry, uh, the jewelry industry. You've worked in many other industries. Um, unfortunately, some people with special needs were also stuck in that workshop, that peace workshop situation. Um, why was it hard for you sometimes, or has it been hard for you in recent years um, to hold a job? And, and if so, why do you want to have a business? And then we can go from there as far as people with special needs and businesses. All my life I was in workshops, and they didn't really help me. Okay. How so? How how did it not, how <clears throat> how did it not help you? Peace Ray, tell me you'll never accomplish anything. Mm-hmm. Okay. You never show me the right way to start and a So basically basically they've taken advantage of you when it came to having a paycheck. Right. Mm-hmm. Um Okay. So Let's talk about the world of um, baseball card collecting, which is a, a, a big Sports hobby. Sports cards, also. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting to that. Um, so you came to Vermont. You've persevered. Um, with a little help. With a little help. Yeah, everybody needs a little help now and then. That, that's the thing that we're trying to project today, is that many people with special needs say they, they don't need help, or many people that are elderly also say that they don't need help and um, they think they can do everything on their own. And that's Is that true? true? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so you like baseball cards, you want to start collecting baseball cards. Um, what's one of the main reasons why? Um, matter of fact, be, before we get to that, um, I had found just a... Um, in 2021, according to um, WW, the website www.boston.com uh, forward slash sports uh, Major League Baseball, there is an article at the, the fact here uh, dated um, August 29, 2021 uh, about, <coughs> about baseball card shows and um, why... Uh, collecting baseball cards happen to be a very lucrative business, and it's basic. It's basically saying that you know baseball cards of yesteryear can range anywhere from from five dollars to millions of dollars, and it's a very lucrative business still, and people still collect them. Um, you know there are um, organizations such as Topps, Fleer, Donruss, and many other card companies that um, still sell cards online. I mean, years ago, um, you used to be able, talking about your hobby for a minute, uh, uh, you used to be able to go in to a candy store, pick up a pack. Supermarket. Or supermarket, pick up a pack of baseball cards, and they used to have the little gum thing inside it. I mean, the gum yeah. taste, tasted really nasty, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but um, yeah, and, and you told me once that if you don't open the pack or box, it's worth more. True. Versus, uh, versus you opening it and so on and so forth. Um, so, why, um, you know, I mean, Card collecting, baseball cards, TV shows. They, you know, TV shows have cards as well. Um, so why um, is it important? I mean, you've had businesses such as, I mean, we're not mentioning names, you know, selling makeup, for example, and that didn't work out for you. Um, but why do you want, um, and do you have an example of what a baseball, for those that don't know, uh, do you have any examples of what a baseball card pack might look like? Uh, I don't have any on me. Okay. No, no, no. But describe, for those that don't know, what, uh, in your words, what, how many cards can a baseball card pack um, 
have and and you know why is it so important? A jumbo pack would have a hundred cards. Okay. Um, you should make. Go ahead. Wax packs, cello packs. So what's the difference between a wax pack, uh, wax pack, and a cello pack, and and why you know it's important to cello pack? You can see it's right through the pack. Okay. And the rack pack, you have like three packs in one. Okay, and um, and they range. Um, I mean, we don't usually like talking about prices, but they range from what? Uh, 50 when I was cents? growing up, they were nickel a pack. Oh, uh, okay. 50 now it's like they sell them in the box. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, do you, besides baseball cards, are there any other cards that you might, that you collect? Football and basketball. Okay. What, and um, since we're going to talk about sports, since you're interested in that, um, what are your favorite teams? New York Yankees, right? Mets. Oh, you're not into Boston? <laughs> oh, very funny. Um, <laughs> well, we're right by Boston, you know. That's true, but uh, can I just say, interrupt you for a minute? Go ahead. Watching YouTube videos about it got me interested. Oh, yeah, there are a lot of YouTube um things about collecting baseball cards. Um, so, uh, do you have any advice, since we're on the topic of small businesses and, and people with special needs having a small business, do you have any advice? Just be mm -hmm. Go ahead. Just because you have special, me special needs doesn't mean you can't do it. You can do it. Mm -hmm. And some <clears throat> It may be a challenge, mm -hmm. but in the long run, it's what something you enjoy to do to do. Okay, and some of your other hobbies um, happen to be photography. Um, do you want to explain a little bit about that and why that's important to you too? It's something to keep myself calm. Okay. Um, because what New New York? Uh, I I'm assuming made you not um, feel very well. Um, and when you being got, treated like dirt, mm -hmm, so to speak. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, so go ahead. Let's talk more a little bit about the business. Why do you really want to start collecting or, or or having a business? I don't see why I can't do it. Just because I have autism, special needs. Mm hmm. Tell me some of the I, misconceptions. I can people wrong. Mm hmm. T tell me. Tell us some of the misconceptions around. Oh, so in other words, what are some of the misconceptions around um, people with special needs when people first meet them and have businesses? I'm not so sure, but people confuse autism with mentally challenged using the R word. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and what, and what do you want to see changed? Or, I mean, it has changed. People don't use the R word anymore. But what do you want to see changed with um, people with special needs and, and, and being... If they can do it, go for it. Okay. Okay. Don't let people say, you're out of your head, naysayers. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so what is a naysayer in this case? Who, who puts you down? Mm -hmm. And why do you, you can't think? Do anything? Why do you think people with special needs uh, shouldn't be put down in in layman's terms? They think they don't know what we're doing. Okay. Can I give you an example? Go ahead. Look, look what you're doing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um. Yeah. That might be funny. You know. No. 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 This. Look. Look. Um. Many often times, people think, uh, oh, he's disabled. He'll, he won't become a journalist. I see your point there. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've, or he won't be a reporter. He won't do well. People already automatically think that because we're challenged, we can't do anything. Um, okay, so um, you've, okay, so you, you, you're collecting baseball cards. You're doing well. 
you're uh, living with with uh, slight assistance. Um, you're, um, you know, you're persevering. Uh, uh, you're persevering. So tell me slightly. What I mean, you don't have to go straight into the past, but tell me slightly what what really upset you. Um, okay, your parents had passed away. You were having issues living on your own, but what really upset you from living in in the Bronx as far as uh, uh, the, the issues that you were having? And because I not mean, getting, go ahead. Not getting. Sorry. Take your time. Not getting help. Trying to clean a two bedroom apartment. Mm-hmm. Being criticized. Being criticized how? Oh, you can't take care of a two bedroom apartment by you know. Mm-hmm. Um. So you you felt that you were basically I hate using this term, but you were basically swept under the rug. Um, and, so true. And and nobody. Um, see, I was a number, not a name. But thank you. Um, and also. You're very um, heavy into uh, being, uh, you know. I mean, you've changed your life. You you're very heavy into uh, going to church. You're also heavy in, into, you know, being a Jewish person going to church, and you've um, you've changed your life around um, so much. Um, and um, you know, I'm. I'm Extremely, extremely happy the way you've turned out. Um, you know, uh, sometimes people with special needs or other groups have to go to other states to get help, okay? And when the state that they're living in is not helping them. So... Can I give you an example of how I got help? Go ahead. You don't, you don't have to say... Um, everything, but go ahead. Look at me for a minute. I'm listening. The teeth. Okay. So New York, um, didn't have dentists, I'm assuming, or didn't want to help you in that? They didn't take Medicaid. Oh, okay. So Medicaid was a, a so Medicaid was basically an issue. Um. Right. So what is one thing? If you can tell Senator Sanders or any senator or governor in Vermont uh, of how you've improved your life, um, but what, uh, how can services improve for people with special needs in the state of Vermont or in the state of New England for that matter? Housing. Mm -hmm. Getting treated with respect. Not being shoved under the Rug, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, you've um. So let's talk a little bit more about your, um, your other hobbies. What are some of the, your other hobbies that you like? Being in Vermont or things that you've done, um, to make yourself a better person. Learning collaborative. Okay. What exactly is that? Like teach. Um, like workshops. So it's through Washington County. So let's look them up. Right. Um, I have uh, a question to ask you. you can oh, edit this. Yeah, yeah. Can I bring up housing court? Oh, oh, okay. So explain a little bit. So, all right, since we're on that topic of housing and people with special needs, what? Yeah, of course we can put that in. Um, what happened? In, if you want to say what happened between New York and moving here, why? Um, so what happened in housing court? Why did they deny you? Uh, because honest and truly, you, your parents' problems or the problems that your parents are, were having with rent isn't yours. You could have. That's what I was told. You could have easily downsized into a smaller. I was room. supposed to. Mm-hmm. So 
Um, explain a little bit more about that if you like. Go ahead. Not not saying too email. much. Not saying too much, but go ahead. I just uh, got a uh, receive a notice to appear in House of Court. Mm hmm. And, and, and. All and, I can remember and, is mm -hmm. the landlord's lawyers wanted to work with me to help me downsize. Mm hmm. But it is. But the landlord didn't want me to downsize. They wanted you to stay in that in that uh, apartment. No, they wanted me out. Okay, and you didn't want to go out. No, no, to downsize. They didn't want. They didn't have me downsize. Okay. Let me hold on. Let me just get a definition here. Okay, hold on, Alan. Disabilities. All right, so uh, people, you said that people with special needs fall through the cracks, um, but that's, um, you know, there, there's um, there's an article here I would like to bring up. Um, a lot of people with special needs do fall through the cracks. Some, you know, some some either here nor there. Um, I remember back in, I think it was, so you've been in Vermont for four years, going on five. Five years. Five years, going on it's six. June. Yeah, and you were here um, some years ago um, describing your issue of falling through the cracks. Um, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a look at an old Abel Den on Air clip where Alan Fruling was here describing why people with special needs fall through the cracks. Let's take a look at this. Three, two, one. Welcome back. Um, that will be edited in. Um, but, um, you know, you didn't, you felt. If you look at, a, I'm sorry, if you look at a, an eviction notice on the bottom, mm -hmm. you mentioned you have special needs, you can't be evicted, but. Not in landlord's eyes. Yeah, that's the thing. So what is one thing that um, if landlords are listening to this interview, um, yes, it is against the law for a person with a special need to, or disability special need to be evicted from their apartment, especially now during COVID um, with moratoriums and, and things like that. I mean, where are people with special needs going to go? They can't, a lot, being homeless, yes, there are uh, homeless hotels in Vermont. There, there, are, there are organizations such as Good Samaritan Haven and others that do help people with special needs. But, um, Alan, t yeah, sorry, okay. There, there are organizations that do help people with special needs, but, you know, being homeless is not easy. Um, it is a very hard thing, especially during the elements um, when trying to find um, uh, services um, for, you know, uh, for you. Um, so, so what happened, pretty much, you left New York. I had help. Yeah, you had help, and Can then I my friend Nate. Go ahead. Can I bring my friend's name up. Go ahead if you'd like. Alice Gulch, if it wasn't for her, mm -hmm. I'd be in a homeless shelter, streets or worse. Yeah, the homeless shelters are not very, you know. Um, I mean, they've improved over time, but um, they're not uh, very easy to um, deal with. Um, so. Really quick before we end, explain a little bit about the Learning Collaborative in Washington County. It, it, go ahead. It's workshops. Mm -hmm. A class about fraud. Mm -hmm. Journaling. Storytelling. Okay. Also, I go to the Global Campus. Okay, so yeah. Uh, Washington County Mental Health has um, something called the Learning Collaborative, um, which we've had on the show. 
Um, so if you are interested in Washington County Mental Health Services, um, you can contact www.cmhs.org. That website, once again, is www.wcmhs.org uh, for Washington County Mental Health Services. And also, uh, if you're interested in the global campus, uh, which is college for uh, people with special needs online, um, uh, let me see. There are plenty. So, what's the website for Global Campus Island? I'm not too sure. Let me see. Let me just double check. Yeah, there is Global Campus Vermont. There we go. Um, yeah, Global Campuses um, are basically college for free. So let's. Uh, oh yeah, I see it. Uh, if you're interested in Global Campus and, or um, becoming a teacher or student you can um, go to www.globalcampuses.org. That website, again, is www.globalcampuses.org. And basically, you can hold a workshop, you can hold a class, you can um, basically teach people about your life story. So, yeah, um, it is a national website. Thank you for that. Um, My pleasure. Yeah. By the way, mm -hmm. sometime in May, I'm teaching a class about autism, and mental health challenge. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. And Down syndrome. So why <clears throat> why do you want to teach people about your life story? Go ahead. So people, it doesn't happen to them. What do you mean it doesn't happen to them? I mean... Fall through the cracks. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, all right, Alan. Well... Thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Then On Air. Um, again, for more information on Alan Fruling's uh, story, um, you can look at the old, um, the old show or the old uh, 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 clip of Able Then On Air at www.orcamedia.net for more information on um, global campuses and you know, telling your life story, because it is important for people with special needs to tell their life story. You can go to www.globalcampuses.org or, or services from Washington County if you're interested in that. Um, uh, those services, www.wcmhs.org. And also, uh, for those people who really need help, um, let me... Um, okay, if if a person with a special need or elderly person um, has problems and is homeless, I mean, it's never good to be homeless, but if you have a problem and are homeless and you are special needs, please, and by the way, they, they fix their website, it's all inclusive now, uh, please log on to www.goodsamaritanhaven.org. That website, once again, if you are homeless and special needs and really need assistance, please go to www.goodsamaritanhaven.org. This puts an end to this edition of Ableton On Air. I'm Lauren Silas. Sorry Arlene couldn't be here today. Um, thank you to our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many, many, many others. Thank you so much, Mr. Alan Fruling, for um, helping people with special needs. Be, be extremely positive. Good luck in your baseball card business. Good luck in living in Vermont um, because, you know, a big city like New York wasn't for you, and I'm glad that you have really um, done well uh, to um, fix that situation. Um, so um, if you are falling through the cracks and need more assistance, please contact um, any of the above agencies that we have mentioned today or um, if you need help, because it's never good to do everything alone. Um, 
try to go to your local offices to get assistance. Again, I'm Lauren Seiler. Thank you to um, our uh, sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, the Association for the Help of um, Blind and Visually Impaired, and the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired here in Vermont. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time on the next edition of Able to On Air. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press, Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx, Able Den On Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.